Kia ora koutou. we're going to look at how to turn some data into a graph in Google Sheets and then if it turns out to be non-linear, what can we do about manipulating some of the data to make a linear graph? So here I've got some data from an electrical uh, practical where I set up some different current values in the circuit and I measured the heat energy that was coming off a uh, power device in that circuit. So first of all you notice that um, these could be a little bit tidier. I'm going to highlight them all, just center them move them into the middle of the cell, and that looks a little bit neater. Now current needs a bit more detail. Up here in this box, current is represented with a capital I, and it's measured in amps. So I'm gonna make sure that's really obvious there. These numbers, some of them are decimals, and some of them don't show decimals. Well, the tool I used could measure to the tens column. So I'm gonna use my rounding buttons here, and I'm gonna show the zero, to show that even though there's no measurement in the hunt in the tens column, the device can measure to that level of accuracy. So I'm going to make sure that's clear. Notice that um, this is looking a little bit crowded. If I highlight this, if I click this box and highlight the whole sheet and then go format, text wrapping, wrap, it will expand the cells to contain any text in there. Now these are measure, measuring heat energy. So over here, I'm going to calculate a mean heat. Um, that uh, energy represented by the capital letter H and that is measured in joules. I'm going to hit enter. Just going to change my font size a bit to match that. Now I want to average all of these really quickly without a calculator and I want to do it in a Google Sheet so that if I then reference that data somewhere else it'll be up to date because if I change this number this will change in real time. So hit equals and type in the word average. No spaces open a bracket. So we're going to tell the computer average what is inside the bracket. Highlight all of these, close the bracket and hit enter. And now this is the mean or the average for those three values. Grab this little blue handle, drag it down and we've repeated that row by row. But you notice that all these heat energy values are only accurate to the ones column. Here I've got all these decimals. I'm going to round again so that I also have my mean results accurate to the same decimal place, which is in the ones column. Cool. So this stuff here is now ready to plop into a graph. So how do we do that? Well, we want to plot current against mean heat. So click and drag so you highlight everything in the current row, column, including the title. On a PC, hold down Control. On a Mac, hold down Command. Then click and drag to highlight all the mean column data with the heading and if you hit this little chart icon. If you can't see it, go insert chart and the, the computer will attempt the first of the go at this graph. Now we don't want a bar graph. We want to change the column chart over here to a scatter. You may have to scroll on your one, but this is the scatter and it will give us points. Now we can see there's a bit of a curve. We should be expecting from this practical there was a curved non-linear relationship. This point looks like it's way out. It's a bit of an outlier. So let's try and get the curve on there to make it really clear. We're going to go to the customize menu now. Now we want to put the, a curve on what's called the series. So we want to add a trend line. We don't want it to be linear. This is going to be a power series curve. And it's doing the best it can to give us the curve it thinks is most suitable. So these ones are pretty well on the curve. These three, it's kind of going between them because it doesn't know that any it doesn't know this one is an outlier and it's giving it equal weighting as well as all the others. Now that's good for now. We need to label up these axes. So if we collapse that menu again, looking at chart and axis titles, bring that menu down, and there's a little drop-down box with all the different titles. We're going to go for the horizontal axis first, and we can just type it here. This is the mean heat energy represented with a capital H and measured in joules. We hit enter and our labeling is done on the y, on the x-axis. We're going to come back and do the vertical axis. Now this was, oh you know what, I've just done that wrong. This is actually, I'll copy that so I can use it later. This is actually the current that I set up represented with I measured in amps. That's better. On the vertical axis I'm going to paste the writing I just made. And now you can see my axes are nicely labeled with a quantity, a symbol, and a unit. There's still no title, so I'm going to change the chart title 
This should be a sentence about what happened. So I'm going to put comparing current in a circuit. Oh, try and type that right. Comparing current in a circuit with heat output and hit enter and that's done. Cool. Now there's not much more to do with that graph. Um, our intervals are looking a little bit clump cumbersome. And notice this doesn't start at zero. Zero is not actually a measurement, but we're going to force the axis to show us zero anyway. So we collapse this here, and we're going to go to the horizontal axis, and we're going to go minimum value, zero, hit enter. And that just shows that the line is coming from a very flat point and then arcing up exponentially. So it looks to me like we have a parabolic relationship. And now I know that to get a mathematical relationship, I'm going to have to take this current and square all the values I used and plot them against the original heat energy. So what I'm going to do over here is on a new line, I'm first of all, I'm going to press equals. I'm going to hit that cell and duplicate it. Now, rather than leave it as that, actually, you know what I need to do is change this all to current squared. So I'm going to go current uh, hat symbol 2. That means current to the power of 2 or current squared, comma, i to the power of 2 for the symbol. And the unit is also uh, to the power of 2 or square, uh, hitting enter. Now what I want to do is really quickly take all these values and square them, which means times them by themselves. Hit equals, hit that cell, and then hat symbol 2. That means this cell to the power of 2, do it for me here. Drag it down. I have six rows of data. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's all of these numbers squared. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Done. Easy, right? But I then want to plot that against the mean. Now, I don't want to highlight this one and then do that. Google Sheets doesn't cope well unless the data is in the same line. So I want to reproduce this without copying and pasting. I'm going to just go equals hit that box, hit enter, and then drag the handle down. Now this is a live copy of this. So if this was to change, this would change too, which is pretty handy, because you might find that during your investigation, you think, oh, I'm going to redo that measurement. It goes to 1200, that mean changes, that mean changes, and look, the graph updated in real time as well. I'm just going to update that uh, back, undo that though. This is actually the data now that I want for my linear graph. I'm just going to give that some color so I can make it stand out a bit. Move this graph over here for now. So I can just box this up, hit the chart icon, and if I'm lucky, or if, I don't, if I've got done the right um, calculation, I should be able to change this to a scatter graph and see a pretty straight line now, a linear relationship. Just to be sure, I'm going to go to Customize and change the series so it has a trend line which is linear. Now look at that, it's trying to give a straight line, that's pretty good. Now my suspicion looks pretty correct, this is definitely an outlier, something has gone wrong with that measurement. So let's get this labelled up and then we'll think about what we can do with that. Collapse that menu, go back to your chart axes and titles, on the horizontal axis, it's no longer just current anymore, it's all of this stuff in here. So I could just copy that text and place it here as the label for my horizontal axis. On the vertical axis, it's still just mean heat energy. I'm going to copy that cell back to my graph, double click it to bring the menu back up. I'm going to change my vertical axis just by pasting in that stuff. Really quick to label. I'm going to give it a title now. I'm going to call this linear relationship between current squared and, and heat energy is my title. Cool. Now part of this graph is that I need to show the mathematical relationship. So to do that, I need to go to the legend. And oh, sorry, it's in the series. And in the series, I want to show a label, which will be the equation over here. And look at that, it tells me 487 asterisk x plus minus 343. So what does that mean? Well, that's in the format of y equals mx plus c. So if I wrote down here, y equals mx plus c, this is already given to us in that format. The y is missing though. What it's done for me is it's gone 487 
x on my axis is i squared. So I put my asterisk in, i squared. Now plus minus is a little bit Mickey Mouse. Really, it just we can just leave that as minus. It means my y-intercept is going to cut down on the negative axis. So I'm going to go minus 3, 4, 3. At the very start of this relationship, just get back into that, heat energy is on the y-axis, so I need to put h equals. Now that is actually my final relationship. Heat is this gradient times current squared minus this y-intercept. Let's just check that y-intercept is really visible. Double click your graph. We're going to go back to customize. And on the uh, horizontal axis, we're going to make the minimum value 0. And you can just see the graph is going down below. So let's make the vertical axis also have a minimum value. A bit more than the y-intercept. Let's go 350. Oopsie, negative 350. And that's just going to show how it's cutting the axis here. If you want to play around with these divisions because you're not happy with those, that's possible too. Although it's not going to change anything about your relationship, it'll just be a cosmetic visual change of those points. So that's how we get the linear graph. What's really important is that when you get this relationship shown, you have to update it with your values that you've used on your axes. So this y equals mx plus c template is what this format is in right now. But you need to remember that y is missing off the front. And on my axis, y is heat. I could have written heat energy equals, and then my gradient of 487, multiplied by current squared, take away 343. Three. That's also acceptable. That is exactly the same meaning as using symbols. Okay? So this is my y-axis variable, my x-axis variable, and my gradient. And so that was how we took our original data, created a nonlinear graph, and turned it into a linear graph with a mathematical relationship.